In this video, which hopefully will be the first in a series, I will be talking about the Megami Tensei games. This video I will specifically focus on the lesser known demon known as Dagon, as well as comparing his depiction there to his depictions in other video games and other media. In my experience, Dagon seems to be most well known for his depiction by H.P. Lovecraft in his stories Dagon and The Shadow Over Innsmouth. The latter story features mysterious creatures known as the Deep Ones, who worship Dagon. However, in reality, Dagon was originally a Semitic god, supposedly of agriculture. But his depiction in the Megami Tensei game seems to be mostly based off of his depiction in Lovecraft. Dagon has appeared in the following Megami Tensei games. The original Shin Megami Tensei, Last Bible 3, Margin Tensei, Devil Children White Book, Devil Children Fire and Ice Book, Demi Kids Light and Dark version, and the PSP remake of Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. Every Megami Tensei game he features in depicts him as some sort of aquatic creature. Kazuma Kaneko's original artwork from Shin Megami Tensei depicts him as this hard to describe thing that I'm gonna show on screen. Margin Tensei's design is similar, but slightly bulkier as well as being a lot angrier. The two strangest depictions seem to be Lost Bible 3, which depict them as a half-man, half-sea monster holding a trident, and the Devil Children slash Demi Kid series, which oddly enough portrays Dagon as what seems to be a female version of the Lost Bible depiction, only drawn cuter because this is Demi Kids, and Demi Kids just tries way too hard to be cute. This game also features a zombie version of Dagon called Dagon Zom which looks basically the same, only yellow, as most zombie variants of demons are in the Demi-Kid series. Due to Dagon not really being a very popular demon, his most important role was in the Japan-exclusive PSP remake of Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, in which he is a boss within the Tatsuya scenario, which is a side story focusing on Tatsuya, who is the protagonist of Persona 2 Innocent Sin and a party member in Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. Because this remake was Japan exclusive, I cannot record gameplay of it, so enjoy whatever footage does get put there. Dagon is located within the Tower of Perception. Before fighting Dagon, General Zula, who is also a reference to the Lovecraft story The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, which features intelligent English-speaking cats, warns the party not to listen to Dagon's chant, or they will be converted to Cthulhu's cult. However, the party members Katsuya and Ulala temporarily become converted. None of his depictions in Megami Tensei are accurate to Lovecraft, other than his appearance, but his depiction in Shin Megami Tensei is accurate to the original Semitic depiction, as his entry in the DDS dictionary reads, Origin, Babylonia, an ocean god worshipped by the Philistines. It said his name comes from the Hebrew sounds for fish, dag, and idon, aon. There used to be important temples for Dagon in Gaza and Ashdod. Dagon is identified as the same Babylonian god Ow, oh, yeah, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. He is depicted with a male appearance, with a human's upper body and a fish's lower body. Other video game depictions don't tend to be very accurate to Lovecraft either, as Dagon appears in a boss in Devil May Cry 4, but in this appearance he is a giant toad. Another popular RPG series, known as The Elder Scrolls, features a character called Mayrunes Dagon, but I am unsure as to if he is based off of the Semitic Dagon, but I would be incredibly surprised if he wasn't at least named after him. Since I still have a lot of time, I'll talk about the depiction of the fictional grimoire created by H.P. Lovecraft, the Necronomicon, in Megami Tensei. The Necronomicon is a tome of magic first mentioned in the short story The Hound, but its exact origin is up for debate. The contents of the Necronomicon details the ancient cosmic beings that inhabit or have inhabited the Earth. According to Lovecraft, the Necronomicon was written by a man named Abdul al Hazared, and functions as both a means of imparting the knowledge of the Ancient Ones, as well as a source of danger for those who read it, as they risk going insane from the knowledge. So far, the Necronomicon has only made one appearance in a Megami Tensei game, and that is as the initial persona of Futaba Sakura in Persona 5. In this game, it is depicted as a large UFO, large enough that Futaba can comfortably sit inside. On top of the UFO is a small metallic gargoyle. This design is meant to symbolize Futaba's vast knowledge. This design is also quite obviously very different from the original Lovecraft design, where it is, you know, a, a book. Other video game depictions of the Necronomicon include Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem, 
which is heavily inspired by Lovecraft stories, and includes the Necronomicon under the name Tome of Eternal Darkness. The video game Crusader Kings 2 also contains the Necronomicon. In this game you receive it from Abdul al Hazared himself, and once read will increase your character's paranoia and lunatic scores. I still have time, so I'll talk about another demon. This time I'll be talking about a demon that has nothing to do with Lovecraft. The demon I'm talking about is Mott, who is the Semitic god of death, who continuously tries to devour Baal every few years. This continued until Mott's father threatened to take over his rule if the conflict did not end. What's interesting about this story is that Baal isn't the real name of the god Mott is trying to devour. Baal is actually a title that means master or lord created by the Semitic people. This Baal is actually the Canaan god of rain, fertility, agriculture, and thunder, named Hadad. The reason he is called Baal instead is because in ancient Canaan, only priests were allowed to utter divine name. Mott has appeared in the following Megami Tensei games. Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, Shin Megami Tensei Imagine, Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey, Shin Megami Tensei 4, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner, Devil Summoner Soul Hackers, Devil Summoner 2 Raido Kuzunoha vs The King Abaddon, Megami Ibanruku Persona, Persona 2 Innocent Sin, Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, Persona 3, Persona 4, Persona 5, Persona Q, Card Summoner, Digital Devil Saga Avatar Tuna 2, and Devil Survivor 2. That really hurt to do them all in a row. Mott's most important roles have been in Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne and Persona 5, and held a somewhat important role in the, in the now defunct MMO Shin Megami Tensei Imagine. In Nocturne, Mott appears as a general guarding the Nagata Cho Diet Building, which is actually a real building. The other generals are Surt from Norse mythology, Mithra from Zoroastrian mythology, and Marta from Hinduism. Mott has twisted the diet building into a maze filled with fake doors and illusions. After his comrades have fallen, Mott confronts the Demi-Fiend in a hallway of statues. The Demi-Fiend must pick which statue is the correct one, otherwise he'll be teleported back. In Persona 5, Mott is a mini-boss in Futaba's palace, which is the fourth dungeon. As a mini-boss, he has the title Coffin Born God. This fight is also the player's introduction to the rat status condition, which plays a major role in the seventh palace. In this fight, Mott will also summon Lamia from Greek myth. Mott's compendium description in Shin Megami Tensei Imagine reads, A god of Ugaritic, which is northwest Nemitic mythology, mentioned in documents unearthed at the ancient city of Ugarit. His name means death or desolation. Mott rules over death and the dry season. He is the opposite number of Baal, the god of the harvest. Mott and Baal are brothers, and are sometimes described as twins, or alter egos, who arose from the same source. The battle between Mott and Baal signifies the changing of seasons between the wet and dry in the Canaan region. Mott himself is the underworld, and his mouth is the gate. Once a living being passes through his mouth, there is no escape. He offers peace to all creatures in the form of death. He was also worshipped as a god of plants, the one who gave the land the power to support life. Mott is an incredibly strong foe. In almost all of his appearances, he has the move Megiddo Laun, which is a strong almighty attack that targets all enemies. Sometimes he also has Megidola, which is similar to Megiddo Laun, but not as strong. Maziodyne, which is a powerful electric attack that targets all foes. Mazandyne, which is a powerful force attack that targets all foes. In Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, his demon whisper allows him to teach Nanashi, Makakaja, Megiddo Laun, and Mamudun. Megiddo Laun being a powerful magic attack, Mamudun being a powerful insta-kill move, and Makakaja being a general move that increases magic power level, which is quite useful. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick look to the previously mentioned Baal. As mentioned before, Baal is actually Hadad, but the word Baal was also used in the Hebrew Bible to refer to local spirit deities worshipped as cult images. Because of this context, they were regarded as false gods, and so the demons Baal and Beelzebub got their names derived from Baal. Because Baal is seen as a false god, this technically links him to the Gnostic Yaldabaoth, who you may remember from Shin Megami Tensei 9, if you played it, I mean it was an Xbox exclusive and a Japan exclusive, Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey, where he was under the name Demiurge, or Persona 5. 
Baal's most important role was in Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, but his second most important role was actually in the much overlooked Megami Tensei 2, in which he is the true form of Bael and Beelzebub. Earlier the protagonist would have fought Bael's frog form, and are given the choice of either killing him or sparing him. If the protagonist spared him and took them with him, Beelzebub will ask to re-merge with Bael when you confront him, and will then join your party. When confronting Lucifer, he will notice Baal being re-merged, and will offer an alliance with the protagonist. It's also worth noting that Baal's design has changed drastically over the course of the series, from what appears to be a grey-skinned woman with an afro holding a sword in Megami Tensei, to a snake woman with wings and a crown in Megami Tensei 2, to a young-looking man holding a goblet and wearing a fish or dragon-themed helmet in Shin Megami Tensei 2, to a horn with eyes in Persona 2 Innocent Sin, and then to this thing from Persona 2 Eternal Punishment.